What's going on, everyone? Happy Succession Sunday. First and foremost, I apologize for the little bit later than usual as far as timing goes. I um uh, friend of the channel uh and someone I consider a friend as well. Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews had his uh he was celebrating a milestone tonight, ladies and gentlemen, with his hundredth uh live movie TV roundup show. So I had to visit him, had to say what's up, had to congratulate him. So it kind of pushed my viewing of the episode a little bit behind, which explains why we're a little bit behind tonight. But again, I wouldn't take that back because I had to show some love to the homie. But neither here nor there, we're here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Ah, what an episode. We're talking about Succession, Season 4, Episode 2, Title Rehearsal. Um, man, this was a fire episode, man. We have so much to go over. How much of Logan tonight was truthful? Was he being honest with his kids? Did he did he really miss them not being there? We talked about it last week. You could definitely see it was there. But how much of tonight's kind of being a nice guy was actually real? Was a little bit of strategy? Speaking of strategy, Tom and Greg, man, they, they were making some nice moves. And seeing Greg actually give someone bad news instead of forgetting bad news was an interesting thing. And I think he's going to be on a power trip for the next couple episodes. And speaking of power tripping... The kids, they won last week's battle with the whole, you know, Pierce acquisition or, you know, trying to, you know, get the acquisition with Pierce and having that victory and having them, you know, cheering and championing. But then the father comes through this week and uh, definitely ruffles some feathers. Rome. What's going on, Romy? I thought I thought the three of you all were going to make it work, but uh, it's just like he's going back to daddy's side. So, oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, fantastic episode. Connor, did anyone feel bad for Connor this episode? I kind of feel bad for him, but we'll be talking about that tonight again. I thank you all for joining me last week. You know, we had our very first episode after show. Had a great time. I uh, appreciate you all joining last week's stream. I appreciate all four of you all that are watching now. I love this show. I love this community, and I love talking about the show with you all. So we will be having a good discussion tonight. But before we get into that discussion, do me a favor. If you, like me, uh, enjoyed tonight's episode, or if you didn't, we're going to talk about it, right? But make sure if you're enjoying the conversation, hitting that thumbs up, sharing this after show, as well as we're live. So I will be doing my best to get to any questions, uh, predictions, theories, you know, concerns that you all had about the episode or where you think, where you think things are headed. I'm going to try to interact with you all as often as I can. But, oh, man, this is going to be a good one, man. But uh, before we get into the discussion... I want to uh, thank you again, everyone that's watching live. We have some people, again, I apologize for running a little bit behind. Uh, what's going on, John, Bruce, wish you'd do a watch. Oh, we'll, we'll, do a watch we'll do one. We'll do one eventually, uh, probably for the finale, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, is this today? It is today. We're here now. We're doing it now. Um, let's see here. My man, Maddie in the building. What's up, Maddie? He says, hold on, let me go back. Uh, Connor has been spying on Logan, and Roman looks like he wants out. Well, we'll get to that. And, and I like what you're saying here about Willa spying for Logan. Very, very interesting, my friend. Um, let's see, let's see. We got some people that was hype. Appreciate you joining, joining me tonight. Um, Zia, I needed Roman to stand up by the end of this episode. <laughs> <sighs> The kids, they can never be on the same page for more than an episode, right? Goodness gracious, man. What is going on, Rome? We'll be talking about that. This episode was fire. Logan's line was so dramatic. One of the favorite, one of my favorite written episodes. We'll get into that, John. I definitely have some thoughts about that scene regarding <laughs> the club that they were in. Can we get in another room? I might have a seizure. That that scene was fire, man. So yeah, there was some really well-written scenes tonight episode. I think Logan is going to end up killing one of the kids. He's no fool. Money does that to the family. <sighs> well, we got a wedding coming soon, and we know what happened last, you know, with season one wedding. Someone ended up dying, so you, you might not be too far off there. Uh, what's going on, Cassandra? Uh, hanging in with you from Florida. Awesome. We got some Florida love in the building. Love that, love that. Roman wants to stick with uh, the 100, and tonight... <clears throat> He wanted to not push a deal by asking for more. Well, we're going to get to Roma. We talked about it last week, man. He was not on board with everything last week. So, yeah, they kind of maybe they pushed him out of the situation, right? So we'll, we'll definitely be talking about Roma tonight. And we'll also share, you know, who was your MVP tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Who stole the episode for you all? We'll be talking about that tonight as well. Greg was unbelievable. <laughs> when, he is, when is he not <laughs> is my question. When is Greg not? Um, after the... 
<clears throat> comedy jam episode. It was nice to have a more dramatic. Yeah, no, I mean, and 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 Will said I I love last week's episode, but I can see where you're coming from, and I definitely can see the shift in the tone. This was a much more serious episode. Again, even seeing, like I said, my man Greg being a little bit more, even though it was hilarious, him kind of giving Carrie the bad news. It was still a side of of Greg that we've never seen. Again, him giving someone bad news is normally the other way around. So yeah, it was definitely a little bit more of a serious tone, which I appreciate it for sure. We go messed up by Jerry. Uh, might be in trouble. Yeah, the, the whole uh, the video clip. Well, Carrie's edition tape was so bad. We'll talk about that for sure. Um, awesome, awesome. So before oh before we get to it, Zia with the four ninety nine super chat. Thank you, Zia. Always uh, coming through, showing some love. I appreciate you, and, and thank you for the love there. And again, thank you to all 42, 42 of you all joining me live tonight. I, again, I love the show. Love talking about the show with you all. And uh, we're gonna have a good time, man. Uh, Travis saying what a good episode. <clears throat> uh, what a great episode. Definitely a nine. Roman is such a <laughs> kind of a feel. Yeah, some some decisions were made tonight, ladies and gentlemen. But again, let's get into it, man. Let's get let's get to the episode. So, like I did last week, I'm gonna most likely cut this out and make it into like my solo review for the week and, and edit it or whatnot. So, what I'm gonna try to do, which I didn't do last week, is, is interact with you all as I cut cut through the scenes and kind of break down the scenes and kind of get your thoughts on it and you know edit that when I make this uh, the video tomorrow morning. So we're gonna have fun. We're gonna interact. I want to hear your thoughts as I break down the episode. But again, before we get into the breakdown, thank you for being here. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed tonight's episode. Hit the thumbs up if you're having a good time. Share, leave your thoughts in the comments. And uh, if this is your first time tuning in, consider subscribing. You know, we cover Succession. We got Barry coming out in a couple of weeks, which that's going to be a fun run. Succession at 8 o'clock, Barry at 9 o'clock. It's a good time to be a HBO fan. Uh, we cover shows, movies. We do live discussions, so much more. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. So with all that being said, Let's get into the discussion again, as this will be an edited version of this video. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for clicking on this video. We are here discussing, as you can see below me, tonight's episode of the final season of Succession, episode two, titled Rehearsal. As we are gearing up for Connor's wedding, which seems to be kind of in limbo, but we'll talk about that tonight. The kids, they can't be on the same page. Why can't Shiv and Rome and, and, and my man can just be on the same page for more than a week can we just make that happen because it seems like rome is running back to daddy we're speaking of daddy logan he's playing with everyone he's testing everyone he's testing time he's testing greg he's testing carrie who we'll, we'll talk about her audition tape in tonight's breakdown and he is just he's on another level he's 10 steps ahead of everyone as this deal seems to be in limbo with lucas and we have of course stewie and sandy jr coming in fourth quarter trying to make the the price go up a little bit higher there's a lot to go over, a lot of family drama, and we know how much this show gives us the great writing. So let's get into the breakdown, and let's talk about our first scene. And again, I want you all that is watching live and those that are watching this breakdown, who stole this episode for you? Put in the comments right now, who was tonight's game changer? I'm going to put my hat in that bin, and I'm going to tell you all, Logan changed the game of this episode. Like I had mentioned in last week's breakdown, the kids shook his core. You know, they 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 were able to get the 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 ball rolling with the Pierce deal, which may I remind you, Logan did not get that deal done. So the fact that his kids were able to get it done, they won last week. We all talked about it. Sure, the price was maybe too high. Maybe this is part of Logan's plan, but I don't think so. But this week, he showed everyone, including his kids, who the real deal maker, deal breaker can be in every situation as we see him. He's he's feeling good at the beginning of the episode. As we know, it's only 24 more hours before the the whole Lucas uh, acquisition comes into place and he buys White Star. And we see that Logan has a plan to go to ATN, which we will be getting into here. But as he's, and again, let me know, do you all feel the same with me as Logan being the the game changer in tonight's episode? And we have a lot more of Logan, the the dad, the businessman, the shark, the Jaws, the Santa Claus assassin himself. We'll get into him here in, in a little bit more. But as that's going on, we see that the kids, and this is where I want to know where you guys are at with the kids right now, as they're watching the the news their newly or potentially newly acquired business uh the pgn which is obviously the direct competition to atn 
as they're watching the news and listening to them talking about the news and what they want to do with the news, it, it doesn't seem the more we're seeing them trying to be the business people, trying to be their dad, they're, they don't seem to be that interested, man. Like they don't seem to really be that interested in news as we hear uh, Ken giving his suggestion of like, we should just play Africa news. We should just have, you know, a global reach. And, and, and obviously Shiv and, and Rome have their thoughts about it. <laughs> it's like, like watching a homework show. But again, it's in this scene here that I'm just realizing, I'm not really realizing, but it's just like, they're just trying to, this is a front. This is this them trying to, again, defeat their dad. They're trying to pose as their father. This doesn't come natural to them as it does for Logan, obviously. So, again, I think this is all a front, especially from Shiv, and as well as, as Ken. It's, it's very personal. And this is where Rome comes in because even last week we talked about it. While Ken is trying to get back at his dad, as Shiv is trying to get back at Tom, and now with her dad being involved with the divorce, Rome seems to be the only one that's level-headed. Rome seems to be the only one that really wants to make himself, create a path for himself with his with his siblings, right? With the whole hundred business they were trying to get off the ground. So this, this seems very telling to me that they really don't know what they're doing, <laughs> right? And it's more of, like I said, it's more personal than it is business. But before we move on to this further scene and breaking out some other moments in this, especially with the Siobhan finding out that Tom's been helped out by Mr. Daddy-in-law, let me see what you guys are talking about, and we'll get back into the breakdown here. Let me catch up to the comments here. And a lot of you all agree with me. Logan, <clears throat> shout out to Richard. Logan definitely killed this episode. I mean, he he's always uh, a shark, but he definitely brought it tonight. Uh, Logan, but Carrie's tape. We'll get to that tape. But yes, you definitely agree that Logan was uh, was the MVP. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Logan, yep, yep. Uh, G reviews for sure. Logan, he's running the show. Yeah, he he's always running it, right? Uh, a lot of Logan's in the chat. So yeah, I, I'm glad you guys uh, saw what I saw. That Logan definitely took over tonight's episode and was the the game changer for sure. The bull speech. I will get to that here in a second. G. Uh, Logan shut it down this episode, but Roman surprised me towards the end. Nate, I got some comments about Roman, uh, and it's positive. I'll tell you that. Logan is a master, of course. He's always 10 steps ahead. Some more Logans in the chat. Gotcha, gotcha. See, I see this is why I, I, I rocks with y'all, man. We we on the same way. And it's okay to disagree, but I love that we can agree on on the, the stuff of uh, of who, who was tonight's MVP. This was great. Connor episode. Okay, very true. We'll get to that as well watching her work. It was so funny. But all right, y'all, let me get back and pivot back over to the breakdown here. Um, and again, it's in this scene, again, noticing that the kids, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know they're up from down, left to right, running a news station. It's not their thing, right? It's just like, come on, stop playing make-believe. But speaking of make-believe, let's pivot over to what's going on with Siobhan this episode. So like I had briefly mentioned, Rome seems to be the only one that's focused on the business. Ken only seems to want to get back at his dad. Meanwhile, Siobhan is worried about this whole situation with Tom. And it's so interesting to see her being so concerned with Tom because the first three seasons of the show, she can care. She seemed to care less about her husband and in and, and a sense of, oh, let's have an open marriage. Oh, let's do this. Let's do that. Her leading the way. But now that Tom's pushing back, she, that's the only thing on her mind. As we see very early on, she gets the call and she finds out that uh, – uh, the lawyers, some of the best divorce lawyers have been compromised or have been kind of swayed by Tom. And, you know, immediately, and we find out a little bit later in the episode why, but immediately I'm like, wow, is Tom making moves like his father-in-law? Is he knows the ruffle of feathers? But as we'll talk about later, this was all Logan's kind of doing. And Siobhan, you know, this is what happens when you're going to dad. He has all the resources in his back pocket. But again, I want to put an emphasis on this, that this is again, this is not only Siobhan, but also Kendall. It's personal. And for anyone out there that's been a part of a business or runs a business, whenever you get the personal involved with the actual numbers and the business and the deals, and that muddies the water. So while they're in there, you know, doing their due diligence, watching their new acquired acquisition or soon to be acquisition with their new station with Pierce, she's more concerned about Tom. Ken's more concerned about embarrassing his dad. So again, their lack of focus speaks more to, as I mentioned, this is why Logan is who he is, 
right? You take the personal away and you focus on business at hand. So again, Siobhan, I love you. She's one of my favorite characters, but Tom has really ruffled her feathers, y'all. She really has. And speaking of ruffle of feathers, when she calls Tom eventually a little bit, you know, not too far away from this scene, she calls Tom about the business move and the, the move that she thinks that he was a part of in regards to the lawyers being kind of the uh, taken away from what she can maybe you know get as far as lawyers representing her she was pretty um pretty aggressive and tom cool calm and collective like a cucumber he's just like I, I'm, I'm telling you shit I, I don't know what you're talking about and we all know it was logan that helped him out but he's playing it cool and again very non-aggressive which is the complete opposite of shiv who's calling him bitch boy and telling him all this stuff man i'm telling you man what I've been impressed with so far with Tom this season is the way he's moving, the way he's maneuvering the situation. He knows that Shiv is, he has the best of her right now. And it's, if I was Tom in a situation, I would be relishing in this. I would be pretty happy with myself considering that throughout the relationship from what we've seen in the show, she's always been the leader of this, of every situation in their relationship. So Tom, playing her like a fiddle man it's it's interesting to see shiv because we've always seen her very similar to her father and a lot of the kids really but more so shiv the emotions they don't shiv and, and logan have a lot more in common when it comes to being emotional lists and we've seen her not really lead with her emotions and not be too lovey-dovey and all that stuff very much so like logan but we see that she's not logan and this is where her vulnerability comes out, that it does bother her that Tom has her in a grip and he's making moves without her. So I don't know. Let me know what you all thought about Shiv and, again, her her approach of leading more with the personal, more so than focusing on the business. But speaking of the business, y'all know I got to talk about my disgusting brothers <laughs> who, you know, they weren't – they were together for most of the episode, but they were kind of making their own thing, especially with Greg – having to call Tom uh, very early in the episode to let him know that. And I love, again, someone mentioned it earlier, the writing in the show is just so fantastic. And I love how they throw it in comedy. But he, let, he lets Greg know, Greg lets Tom know that Logan is in the building. And he calls him Santa Claus. That looks like Santa Claus is a hitman. And if if Jaws was, if Jaws ruled everyone, and if you work for Jaws again, I just love how fearful Logan's presence is for anyone. Uh, and, and again, <laughs> this moment was so funny to me. But speaking of this Jaws-like figure, this Santa Claus hitman figure, aka Logan, he's in the bullpen, man. He's uh, going around making everyone a little bit nervous, which, like I said, makes sense you know it is uh he, he is a, a titan in this industry as we see him watching the guy making his emails and, and again just making the tension in the room whenever logan's around everyone's on their p's and q's everyone's on their toes because they don't know what's going to happen next he can fire you he can hire you he can maybe have you killed i don't know he's he's that type of dude but we all know the election is coming and we know that the, the Roy family has had their hands in who becomes the president. So I'm very curious to see when that, that storyline comes back up in a season because we haven't seen the candidates since uh, season three. So very, very excited to see what comes of that. But speaking of um, interesting situations at hand, we find out that Miss Carrie is, you know, and we all knew this, you know, if, if it was ever on the fence, if Carrie was sleeping with Logan, well, you, you got your answer in this episode as she's, kind of maneuvered her way into becoming an anchor. And oh boy, when we see this tape, ladies and gentlemen, of her trying to be an anchor as the kids are watching this on TV, yeah, she's she's pretty bad. I don't know if bad uh, is the word that I would use. It was pretty horrendous. It was pretty embarrassing. She's not good at being an anchor, for sure. As we have the kids again watching this, and she is just terrible in every sense of the word. But again, having this scene here play out and this seeing her trying to be an anchor and the kids poke in front of her. And even though I'm, I'm making fun of her now, she is she has an influence on Logan. We'll talk about it later. But the the empathy that Logan does have for these kids, I do think he loves them in, in the Logan way of loving someone. But the way she's maneuvering the situation at hand, being the person that he confines to, tells his emotions to, talks about the kids with, but also finding a way to potentially become a news anchor. 
I mean, Carrie is is not a is not no one to blink an eye at, man. I'm very curious to see how much she plays into the rest of the decisions that Logan may or may not make this season. And we talked about it last week. If Marsha is going to be appearing in this season, the more and more we get Carrie on screen, the more and more I think that Marsha might not be involved because she's right now Carrie's kind of filling that void as the the right hand woman of Logan at this point in the season. So again. Hormone audition tape, but the fact that she was able to get essentially kind of what she wants, which is, I guess, to be a news anchor slash still be Logan's assistant. I don't know how that works, but I'm, I'm very, I'm keeping my eye on Carrie. And, and speaking of keeping an eye on Carrie, I don't want to forget, and I don't know, hope you all haven't forgot about last season's uh, finale, season three. You all remember there was a, it was not a throwaway line, but the conversation at hand was that Logan was taking some type of drink or some type of protein that would boost his immune system and it would uh, boost him becoming a father again. And we all assumed that Carrie was the one he was testing this new type of uh, medicine. I can't remember if it was medicine or some type of, of, of plan or something, but that was still that was a plot that they kind of threw in last season that he was trying to have kids again. And I assume that Carrie is the one he wants to have kids with. So again, Carrie, someone we should keep an eye out for. Let me know what you all think about that in the comments section. But before we move on, let me get to the live chat and see where you all are at with, with Carrie the tape and, and all that stuff and everything that's going on with ATN. Let me let me pull up the comments here, see what we got going on. Uh, yeah, Greg, <laughs> watch out for Greg. You get always watch out for him. Let's see here. Roman has the most sense. I agree with that comment there for sure. She's losing it. Yeah, the emotions are showing, man. She she doesn't have control, and when when she doesn't have control, she loses control for sure. Something I wish she would just chill out. <laughs> Siobhan did not appreciate Tom switching the roles on her 100%. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a snake right now. He's he's maneuvering. I mean, hey, when you hang around the Roy family long enough, you become one of them. So, yeah, that show talked about how Logan respects Roman more for his rawness. Oh, okay, I didn't see the after show. I saw the trailer, but I had to prep for the show. So, interesting. I appreciate you uh, sharing that, Travis. Ken wants the deal to blow up. I don't know why. You know, he wants to be... His dad, why would he want, you know, then hundred million more on the table? He could lose that. That's that's a stupid move. But again, getting mixing personal with business. They're making terrible decisions. I think Tom choosing Logan over Shiv is actually screw him over. I think Logan has a heart no matter how small it is. <clears throat> so Maddie, are you suggesting that you might see Logan screwing over Tom and ultimately deciding to help his daughter maybe and 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 really messing this divorce up. Very, very interesting. I think Tom is up to something. I have to see him removing himself from the equation and having a bigger piece of the pie. I wouldn't disagree with you there, my friend. <clears throat> yeah, she's super messy. She should have stayed uh, working with Bernie. <laughs> Where is Bernie? He, did he bow out of the, of the election? Because I don't remember seeing him when they had that whole summit last year with all the president's uh, electees. So I don't I don't know if we're going to get any more, uh, Mr. Bernie. <laughs> um, let's see. Logan is using the divorce to teach shit. Listen, interesting. <coughs> Tom was a fake. A lot of Tom, a lot of Tom haters tonight. What's going on, B? Again, shout out to Brandon who celebrated his uh, huge milestone of 100 plus or 100 shows for us after his weekly wound, uh, roundup show. So definitely check out that replay and uh, subscribe to my homie, Brandon, man. He has a lot of great uh, opinions and a lot of great movie reviews, he reviews and all the good stuff. But yeah, shout out to you, B, and, and thank you for the for the super chat, my friend. I think Tom was much more in love with the idea of family business, of so, uh, family company. <clears throat> uh, was not for uh, to show up. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into Mr. Rome, who I think uh, is, is definitely a... Um, Leaning towards leaving the siblings and getting back with his dad. Um, half on the fence about the audition tape. I think Logan might have set it up, made the kids think he's losing the edge. Ooh, interesting, Maddie. Um, my only pushback with that, Maddie, as we'll talk about later, when when Greg had to give her the bad news, she seemed to take it very emotional. Like if it was all a ruse and if it was nothing that she really was invested in, I don't think she would have pushed back and been that upset. And you could tell it bothered her. Um, but I, I like where your head's at, man. Again. Logan's always 10 steps ahead of everyone. So Tom is a wimp. Can't direct. <laughs> All right. So let's get back into it again. Horrible audition tape for sure. She 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 embarrassed herself. But let's let's talk about this, man. Again, 
Siobhan is um, is leading. I think she's leading more with her heart and her emotions more so than being the logical person. Because again, we, we we sometimes forget that she before she got into the family business, she was helping people become presidents and running for mayor and all that stuff. So she's very smart. She's probably the for I would say from a business perspective, all of the kids have a piece of Logan in them. But I would say Siobhan is maybe the closest to Logan from a business perspective. I don't think Ken has that killer shark in him. I don't think Roman has the full knowledge to really lead a company. But I feel Siobhan has that instinct in her. But we're seeing the reverse of that with this phone call here. As we see Sandy Jr., who makes her first appearance this season, Gets on the phone and wants to open up the conversations about Sandy and Stu coming in to buy Waystar. As we know, that was a big deal for, for the last few seasons, especially last season. And again, we're seeing Shiv acting more on emotions, especially you notice she this conversation happened immediately after she called Tom and called him a bitch boy and all that stuff and immediately has this conversation. So again, this is a, a decision. This is a move, in my opinion, purely stemming from emotion that she's upset with Tom, but also, you know what? Who's working with Tom right now? My dad. Let me try to screw them both over. Two in one type of situation. So again, yes, this is a somewhat smart business move. Yeah, we can maybe get more money out of this, but I don't think that's her first priority. Her first priority is how can I screw Tom? How can I screw my dad more so than how can I put more money in my pocket? I think that's where her head's at with this decision right here. And I am very curious. I'll, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Stewie and, and Sandy Jr. And I'm very curious to see how they're going to play into the season. But let me know in the comments. Let me know in the live chat. Do you feel as though Shiv is, again, leading more with her emotions, that this is more of an emotional decision to screw over her father and Tom, especially with them in cahoots with the whole divorce situation? Or do you think that this is she's mixing that in business with pleasure a little bit, but still has money on the mind, business on the mind. Where are you guys at with this right now, especially with this phone call at hand? But moving forward, man, we see again the uh, the lion, the man himself, Logan, is uh, gathering up his team. He wants to meet with his team and, and, and get things going. Uh, and again, he doesn't want anything to do with the decision of handling if Carrie's going to be on camera or not. He's going to leave that up to Greg. Again, take notes, ladies and gentlemen. Logan's he's a smart man. You don't want to, you know, piss where you eat uh, per se, right? So he's he's smart in having them handle that situation for he can keep Carrie on his side and, and keep that in mind. Not only I think his security guard Colin and I also think Carrie and also Jerry and and Carl they all have dirt on the Roy family, but more so Carrie. She's sleeping with Logan, and if Carrie isn't happy. And if Logan's the one that tells her you're terrible in front of camera, just keep working with me, you'd be my assistant or whatnot, she would probably do some things that wouldn't be good for Logan. So he's smart to just let the, the cousin and the son-in-law for now handle that situation. He's smart. Take notes, y'all. That's, that's how you handle your, your messiness. But neither here nor there, while he's having them do that, we see Logan is... He's he's not happy with Manson, uh, Lucas, you know, Alexander Skarsgård character who makes an appearance in tonight's episode who we'll talk about. But he's not happy with some of the branding. He's not happy with who he's put on the board. But prior to that, let me let me backtrack this a little bit again. I got to always bring up the great way that this show brings in comedy when Hugo is, is watching the tape with uh, with Jerry. And I love the back and forth with all of his secondary supporting team characters. She knows, Car Caroline, I think is her name. She knows what they were watching. And he's like, oh, no, go ahead, Hugo. Put it, put it on your screen. Put it on your And he's like, no, my computer's broken. I'm like, oh, really? You, you were just on it. <laughs> and the fact when he opened the laptop and it's the, the videotape, it's hilarious. But, again, the important thing to note is Logan seems to be, he seems to have some concerns with Lucas. And that's what I want to get at. He doesn't like to be second in command. He doesn't like the way Lucas is kind of handling. Oh, Lucas wants you to take the photos. Lucas, hand, he's handpicking the new members of the board. I'm curious to see if that's going to come ahead. If, if we're going to see Logan maybe really let Manson, Lucas, know that he's not that happy with who's going to be in, in charge. And if he, if Logan's going to be the one that maybe messes up this deal, I'm very curious to see where that goes. But again, pivoting back over to the kids. They're on their way, as we know this episode is titled 
rehearsal. So we all know that Mr. Uh, Mr. Connor, poor Connor, man, we're going to talk about him. He's an idiot. Don't get me wrong. I want to set that, that, that stone in place. Connor is an idiot. He is a very, uh, uh, you know, confusing individual, weird individual on a lot of fronts. But I felt bad for him in this episode. I don't know, man. It's maybe just I'm just too too much of a nice guy. But I'll tell you who isn't a nice guy, and that is Logan. Logan Roy, y'all. As they're preparing to go to the rehearsal dinner for their oldest brother, they're getting on their, the chopper, get to the chopper. And unfortunately, the chopper has been shut down. This private helicopter has been compromised by the one and only Logan again. I'm telling y'all, take tally at home. Logan wins tonight episode. From a mental standpoint, he's playing mental gym, gymnastics with his kids. He he's moving a lot of chess pieces, so he's ruffling the kids' feather as this uh, as this is being taken away. But we're seeing Shiv, and again, I want you all to notice: whenever the siblings are lying to each other, it always compromises them. We know Shiv just talked to Sandy Jr. and wants to get back into the conversation with Stewie. But she doesn't tell her siblings. <sighs> Why do they keep compromising each other, right? As she kind of plays coy and like, oh, um, oh, surprise, surprise, uh, Stewie and and Sandy, they want to talk, guys. You guys want to maybe get this? And, and 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 so far, Rome, Ken, no, screw them. We don't want to get back in bed with them and and all that stuff. But again, man, we as an audience are just like I'm telling myself, Shiv. Just be truthful. Just let him know that you spoke to him. Let him know that this is kind of where your head's at versus kind of lying your way into the situation. Because, again, whatever is in the dark tends to come out in the light, y'all. So, again, these siblings can never get on the same page. But, again, I just wanted to point out how Logan is just continuously 10 steps ahead of his kids and is screwing around with them and taking their toys away <laughs> just like a parent, right? <laughs> the kids think that they got dad, uh, control on dad, but he lets them know, I still got power over you guys, no matter what you think. You, you think you might have won, but you really haven't. But as we move forward to the actual rehearsal dinner, and we see Willa, uh, well, first, before we actually get to the rehearsal dinner, Stu and Sandy Jr. magically pop up. We all know Shiv probably gave them the heads up where they're going to be headed. They're surprised. I'm referring to Rome and Ken. They're surprised that they're there, but of course, we know Siobhan isn't. But we know they want to get back into bed with the Roy family. They want, their proposition is, hey, your dad He's, my, he's not making the best decision. The number he's selling the company to with Lucas isn't a good number. We, we can offer you more. Let's get back into the conversations. Of course, Shiv's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, Ken and Rome are like, no, we're, we're good. We're literally 24 hours away from being billionaires and buying PGN and you know potentially making other money moves. But again, Shiv's playing pretty, playing pretty stupid. And it's... It's a, it's a deal on the table, and, and I'm the question I want to ask for you all watching live, and of course watching on the replay. Again, if you were in their position, do you take the deal that's less than twenty four hours away, or do you consider this deal? And again, we know what's going to happen a little bit later in the episode. Just putting what we know from the happens a little bit later aside, but just in that moment, which way would you be leaning? Would you take the money that seems to be guaranteed because it's happening in less than 24 hours? Or would you consider taking a higher bid and maybe walking out a richer person? I'm the type of person that I'm, I'm probably taking that first deal with Lucas and also taking into consideration uh, last time we saw Sandy and, and uh, more particularly Stewie, I don't trust Stu at all. I don't trust him with anything. So I don't know if I would want to get into business with him at all. So let me know in the comments, what way would you all go? Would you, like my man G in the comments now, taking the security bag, uh, Z is saying guaranteed money. That's where I'm going. I'm not making any deals with Stewie, but let me know in the live chat and let me know uh, those watching the replay, which, which side of the table would you be laying on? But speaking of uh, side of the table, Willa, we're going to the rehearsal. Willa um, is with her girls, and, and you can obviously see something happen. I thought it was more so um, Connor might have said something inappropriate, as he tends to do. Uh, he might have got a little bit too excited, had a little bit too much to drink, maybe had some other Willas around <laughs> during this rehearsal dinner. But no, we, we later find out that the reason why Willa was kind of acting weird and kind of rushed out of there with her girls is 
as and and by the way, keep in mind, Shiv this whole time is like, guys, can we just get the hell out of here? It's Connor. Who cares? This is what ain't gonna really happen. Can we just handle business? Business with pleasure is kind of a theme of this episode, but they're like, no, let's let's go check on let's let's see what's going on. Which, by the way, this happened last week and it's happening again this week. As despicable and as backstabbing, conniving the siblings could be, this is the second week in a row where we see the siblings trying to look out for each other. We saw last week when Shiv was upset about the divorce and everything going on with Tom. Her brothers were there. They were trying to, you know, they put business aside for a little bit, say, hey, how you doing? How's your feelings? You want to talk about it? And then we see the same thing happen this week. Again, They, they these characters have small hearts, but they still have hearts. We see Rome, and more surprisingly, I want to say we see Ken, and more surprisingly, Rome, they want to check in on their big brother. They want to check in on, on with Connor, even though <laughs> Rome is just hilarious, man. He just says anything that comes to his mind. But we see the only one that doesn't want to be there is Shiv, because obviously, like I said, her whole motivation this episode is screwing over time and screwing over her father. But again, Ken, Ken and Rome seem to be more concerned about Connor than anything. But speaking of Connor, we find out what happens. Why Willow was acting so strange is because when she was making her, again, they were at the rehearsals, when she was making her speech, she told everyone, or at least everyone at the rehearsal dinner, that she doesn't want to do this. She doesn't want to marry Connor. And clearly we see Connor's upset. And, and again, we'll talk about it later as far as if you feel bad for him. But when he talks about being kind of built on not loving people, I, 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 I fell for it. Again, it, it's weird to say that out loud because Connor's such a moron. <laughs> but it's obviously it's the performance from our, uh, you know, uh, that we have here that makes me have compassion for him because he's an imbecile. He's an idiot. He's marrying a, his, his, his prostitute, man. <laughs> right. But it's still, when we'll talk about this scene, I, I felt for him in that moment. But again, we find out that Willow kind of walked away. And, and as of right now, he feels as though that his, uh, his dream wedding with his lovely wife <laughs> trying to save someone, um, is not going to happen. But we see Shiv, she's kind of persistent in this moment about leaving, but Rome and Ken want to help out their big brother. And again, this is another example of them lying because, again, Shiv, just be honest. Like, hey, I really want this deal to go through. I really want to consider this other deal. But again, she's just kind of, again, lying and just playing playing uh, the game that they normally do, which is, again, they love to lie to each other. But speaking of lying to each other, man. We see him again, uh, the MVP to me tonight, Logan. Again, he's testing everyone in tonight's episode. And more particularly, we see in this scene here that I'm going to be pulling up is him testing Tom. And he's talking to Tom and having a kind of a, a heart-to-heart, per se, if you want to call it that. And I wonder if he, just backtracking a little bit, Logan in this scene with Tom as he's talking to him about – the Carrie situation again, it goes back to does he actually genuinely care about Carrie or does he protecting his ass because he know Carrie has a lot of dirt on him or if he's really again, how are you going to handle this Tom? Is he testing the waters on his potential successor and, and seeing who can really go to bat for him? But he's having this moment with Tom. And he talks about and I love Tom again. He's smart, y'all. He's smart. I know everyone in the chat now is calling him a coward or whatnot, which he is. But he's 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 playing the game. He's playing the game of the Royce. I love how Tom managed to not say that Carrie was terrible, but at the same time saying that Carrie was terrible on the tape. <laughs> it was so funny to me as he handles this conversation and navigate. I love when the character and the way the show does so great of navigating the conversation, it comes off as the character in the moment is just spitting off the top of the head whatever comes to their mind is the first thing that comes out of their mouth and then you can see the ball rolling in his head and i love the way these actors play that but again the way tom who all season long or all series long is so afraid to talk and be truthful with logan the way he's able to manage this conversation about carrie being bad but not actually saying it but then managing a way to say she's raw she needs more time, maybe more time than more time, and maybe never happening, but not actually saying that. Again, it's a smart way to handle this conversation as he tells Logan that, no, I don't think it's the right move to make. But again, I beg the question is, do we honestly think Logan want to carry in the situation because of what she knows, who she is, the position of power she's in, or do we see this more of a play towards 
this was Logan testing Tom with a pretty delicate situation. This is the girl I'm in bed with. This is a girl who, again, knows a lot of dirt about not only me, but everyone in the family. Was this a power move yet again by Logan? I'm testing you, Tom. How can you maneuver this situation? I'm more so on him testing Tom more than anything. I don't really think he cares if Carrie gets the job or not. But hey, that's just me. Let me know what you all think. And speaking to you all, let me give it back to the chat and see how you all are feeling so far. And we'll get back to the breakdown. And again, we got 60 people watching live. It's 1030 where I am. I don't know where you guys are around the world, but wherever you are, the fact that you're here means the world to me. If you're having a good time, if you're enjoying the conversation, just a reminder, thumbs up goes a long way. I appreciate it. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I would appreciate it. And continue to uh, uh, have fun tonight because I'm having fun, man. Like I said, I love interacting with you all. But let's see where you guys are at in the comments section. Let me let me just scroll up here. All right. And I, I'm going to see where <clears throat> she's actually just like him. Yeah, you're talking about Siobhan. Yeah. Being closer to that. Uh, Hope Davis is great as Sandy Jr. on the show, but it's <laughs> I don't, she's a great actress. I don't watch your honor, but um, no, she's great in the show for sure. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll get into Mr. Logan here in a bit for sure. Should should <clears throat> can have Logan Jr. but kind of has morals. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Rome on the other hand is willing to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well said. Well said. Nobody's safe. Uh, why did Ken lie about being on the phone with Lucas? We're gonna get to that here in a second. And and, and by the way, uh, someone I can't remember who mentioned it last week. I think it was Voice. So I don't know if Voice is here tonight, but he had mentioned how he feels like Kendall's kind of being in the background, which I agree with him. But I'm actually okay with that because I'm I'm seeing you know they're giving a little bit more screen time for Rome and and more for Shiv and of course the Disgusting Brothers. But let me know if you guys feel like um who Kendall is my favorite character in the show. I said that last season. I still stick by that. But I'm okay with him being more of a background player because I feel like his arc kind of came into fruition last season when he finally let out what happens with killing, you know, the, the guy in season one. But let me know, you all in the live chat, um, do you miss Kendall not kind of being, because if we're being honest with each other, the first two seasons, he was kind of the co-lead of the show, him and Logan, obviously, as you can see on the side of me here. But let me know how you guys feel about that. Do you feel like Logan or Ken's been kind of a background player, kind of been a supporting character. And if uh, if you're okay with that, do you do you feel bad about it? Let's talk about it in the chat. But let me uh, let's see here. Why did Connor plan his wedding date on the same day? Very well. He planned. Well, I think that this had that because I'm, I'm trying to remember the circumstances in the in the the timeline. I think this was already set in stone before. Yeah, this was already set. The wedding and everything was already planned prior to Lucas getting involved last season. So I think this timeline-wise, I think it was already kind of – but you would think, you know, Logan would probably say, move your date. But clearly Logan doesn't care about his son's wedding. But, no, you bring up a good point, though. Uh, name <laughs> That was a funny moment that we'll get into here in a little bit. Kendall's a wild card. He's uh, – he ooh, he could be – okay, Maddie. Okay. Okay, Maddie. You think that's the case? I don't think so, man. But, again – very interesting because he has been in the background so far, so that could be a, a wild card. But it is the last season. That, that, that feels like something that you would do to set up another season. But, yeah, <clears throat> a lot of you all would just take the bag. I'm right there with you. I don't trust Sandy at all. Neither does Karen. I never – yeah, he's just – that actor plays such a, a, a uh, scumbag so well. Um, if there's only one man and money, all the guaranteed money, yeah. Let's see. It's funny to watch the kids try to have empathy because they, yeah, for sure. You guys feel bad for Connor. Yeah, we'll talk about Connor a little bit later. Connor. <laughs> uh, I think he's always looking for a successor. Yeah, Z, you're talking about the conversation between um, Tom and um, and Logan in the, in the kitchen. Yeah, Logan is playing the kids. Let's see. <clears throat> Tom's playing the game, but Logan is tired of his half answers. Seeing him, yeah, that's a good point, Maddie. I love the yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, y'all. Um, great stuff, great stuff. Kendall was your yeah, he's he's been my favorite for a while, man. I love what what he has. But let me yeah, before I move on, let me see how you guys feel about Kendall kind of being more of a background player per se. I like how Kendall is playing the cards closer to his chest this season. Okay, I miss Kendall getting stone. See, 
hey, we, we still got eight episodes, Maddie. We, we might get another hot 16 bars from Kendall this season. Uh, Zia Ken is where he needs to be. I don't think he is well yet. I, I agree. I still think there's some demons he hasn't fully dealt with. And by the way, where's his kids and his wife? Are they just, I guess, no longer involved in the show? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So where did we leave off? We talked about the conversation between Tom being potentially tested by Mr. Logan. <coughs> let's see here. All right, so they're at the bar. Oh, speaking of the bar, goodness gracious. So let's 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 let's, let's take a detour and talk about Connor again. We'll talk about it. I, I did feel bad for him at the end of the episode, but then he reminds me why he's such a weirdo, dude. He, as they're at the bar, he takes them to a local bar, which, by the way, I mean, these are, they're not like celebrities, right? But they're pretty, you know, influential people with millions and billions of dollars on their access, but uh, or that they have access to. They're just going to some local random bar without security. I don't know. That's not a good move. But anyway, they go to this local bar. And we find out that Connor, again, just such a weirdo. He's like wondering where Willa is. He's He has a, the app on his phone. He kind of plays it off, right, where he says, oh, I have I turn on the find my phone. No, you, you probably secretly put an app on her phone to follow her. Such a weirdo. But anyway, we see in this moment here that he's he wants to just hang out with his family. He just wants his siblings to be there for him because as of right now, he thinks that the wedding's probably not going to happen, which, I'm, which if you see the trailer, the wedding – is going to happen, but he, at the moment, he just wants to be loved, even though he says a little bit later, he doesn't care about love, but I, he says that these, these Roy's, they, they pretend, they always pretend they're fine. Nothing bothers them, but they, they care. They really care. But again, if you guys get a little, get a laugh or just we're reminded how weird he is and he doesn't have consent of following where his soon to be wife is oh, Connor, man, it's just, just a weird individual. But as we get back to the disgusting brothers, of course, we know Tom puts the blame, or not I shouldn't say put the blame, but he puts the the job of telling Carrie that she's not going to be a part of the deal, uh, and he has to talk to her. But prior to that, someone mentioned a little bit earlier in the chat, and we, we had a little conversation about it, which, by the way, for those watching the replay, come and join us live when we have these after shows, because there's a lot of great conversations, a lot of good things that people bring up in the chat. But someone brought up, uh, brought up in the chat as far as we had a conversation about Ken kind of being in the background. And again, I mean, I mentioned the kids lying to each other. Why didn't Ken tell anyone that Lucas called him? As we're seeing the scene here, Lucas tries to, well, doesn't try. He, he does pretty much give Ken a warning, like, don't F with me, bro. And by the way, who told him about the meeting? Who's the one that told Lucas that the siblings were considering taking the deal? Who's the snitch? Who's, I mean, again, we know Lucas has a lot of money, so it's not, it probably doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. And, and we know these people don't keep their mouth shut. But who is the one that is potentially leaking this information is what I want to know. And I'm very curious to see if there is a rat in the, in the, in the cage. But we see Lucas telling Ken that he knows that there's a deal in hand and he warns him he's going to drop the bomb, drop the nukes on him if he continues to do this and he's going to walk away. And we see my boy who we talked about has kind of been a secondary character. Instead of for him fleeting, being fearful, being scared, what does is, what is, uh, our boy Ken do? Well, he says, you know what, Mr. Lucas Masson, I, I, I don't take threats too kindly. And we see him immediately texting Stu. He texts us, Stu and he says, hey, Stu, send me over the deal. I'm considering it. And again, this is a move. That shows us that every single one of the Roy family of the kids, they have that shark in them. He he's not backing up from them threats. Maybe season one, maybe Ken, unstable Ken, drugged out, high on his ass, Ken would have been fearful of this threat by someone that's about to buy his company. But Ken says, you know what, bro? You know who my dad is? I learned a lot from him. I'm not gonna take your shit. I'm gonna go ahead and and, and open up that conversation with. Stewie, who again, as I mentioned, I don't trust Stewie, but neither here nor there. He takes the bait and he says, Screw you, Lucas. I'm going to go ahead and um, 
get this deal maybe on the table. I don't know if that's a good move or a bad move. Let me know in the chat. But again, going back to the discussion, brothers, of course, Greg is the one that's going to have to drop the news on Carrie. And before we get into the series, the, the best scene of the episode to me, which we're going to break down here in a second, I do want to bring up where is the scene where we see Greg, and I mentioned this up top, we normally are used to seeing Greg being the one that's getting the bad news. He's normally the one that's told to sit down, to shut up, this, that, and the third. But to put a smile on my face, <laughs> to see Greg being the one to giving someone the bad news as he, and he does, does I guess the best way Greg can do it in the situation by telling <laughs> Carry that it was a focus team involved and that it kind of boiled down to her arms. <laughs> her arms weren't TV friendly. <laughs> Gosh, man. And, and the way he just kind of muffled and, and mumbled and stuttered and, and made his way to that, to that reveal was just very funny to me. Very, very funny. I couldn't forget that scene. Let me know what you all thought about Greg laying down the law. And then also Carrie, again, we talked about her a lot in this episode. She threatens Greg saying, if I find out that there was no focus team, I'm going to destroy you. I don't know if we're going to see that come to fruition, but I do think we need to keep an eye on Carrie this season for the remaining episodes. But I got a kick out of that scene. I loved it. It was so funny. Again, your, your arms weren't friendly. <laughs> rubbery arms, whatever he said. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. But getting back into the seriousness, and before we get into like the big scene in this episode, which was uh, Mr. Roy or Mr. Logan having the conversation, <sighs> these kids, man, why, why, why can they not just be honest with each other? But at this point, they're at the bar. They're having a conversation after Ken decides to get Stewie back in the mix. Obviously, Siobhan's happy about this news. But again, it's Roman. We talked about it last week. He didn't want to get involved with the Pierce family. He wanted to do the Hunters deal. But brother and sister convinced him to get on board. He's rolling with the punches. In tonight's episode, let's focus on the Pierce acquisition. Um, Shiv's like, well, let's talk to Stewie and Sandy. Um, let's do that. And even Ken at first was on the fence, but then he got his little motivation after the speech or conversation he had with Lucas. And now he's on board, but Rome was like, come on guys. Can we just focus on one thing? <laughs> it's like one, one week we're starting a company. The next minute we're, we're trying to kill dad again. We're now it got this company and now we're trying to back out of the deal. I don't blame Roman for not really being on the same page with his siblings, but again, it's the it's two weeks in a row. The decision Roman makes in this episode, it's been built into this because again, if I was in his shoes, I'm probably not trusting Shiv and Rome or Ken in the situation. And I love that Roman called them out on their shit in this moment because he says, because by the way, we get the let me bring up the scene here. It again, these kids lying to each other. We see that Daddy Logan, who seems to always know when to step on people's shoes at the wrong time, he texts uh, his son, Rome, who we find out texted him, I guess, during last week's episode, during some time, happy birthday, and I uh, got a kick out of Ken and Siobhan reading the text messages, trying to you know, get a, a get a read on it to review his text messages there. But again, I love the fact that Rome calls them out on their shit because they're like, oh, you're messing with that. Like, you're the two. That it, all this these business moves have been sh like strictly based on revenge, right? It's them trying to get back at dad, trying to get a one up on their dad. So I love I'm telling you, man. Roman has really he's grown up in front of our eyes, man. He, he's he's doing his things. So I'm loving all the stuff that we're getting with Roman this season. But I love that he calls them out. But we see yet again, Rome is convinced by Siobhan, by Ken, and even Connor. We know Connor doesn't really have much to say in it, but they're going to disrupt the deal. They're, they're on the same page for now that they're going to mess up this deal for now, which speaking of Logan, he learns of the news of the kids messing up the deal. And again, I want you all to pay attention to, to Logan's mannerisms, his reactions, he can be upset, like we saw him. He was a bit upset that he lost the Pierce deal or that the kids got the deal that he wasn't able to accomplish. But he he still had a little bit of a – I think he was a little bit happy that his kids did that to him because in a sick way, he, he probably loves to see 
you know, last week, roast me, roast me. This is what they do. This is what backstabbing is just like, this is how they love each other. This is how they hug each other. Instead of hugging them, they, they stab each other in the back. That's how they show love. So he hears, he finds out that the kids are involved and they're disrupting the deal. And let me pull up uh, Santa Claus, the assassin Santa Claus, the Jaws character. Look at this, look at this, look at this face. Does this look like a face of someone that's upset? No, it doesn't. Because he's 10 steps ahead of him. He loves chaos. He loves this. Last week, roast me. Carl, roast me. Do this to me. He, this, is, this is what he thrives on. This is what he lives in. This is how he made his billions of dollars. You don't become Logan Roy by just turning over, being pissed, being mad you lost a deal. You thrive in it. You live in it. And you figure out how to win. I love this. I love this here, man. Let me know what you all think about Mr. Logan. He again, he stole this up he, as he normally does, but he really just steals this episode. With the, he, he tells the he says the line. He knows his kids got the juice. Again, he he he's paying attention to is what his kids doing. He loves this. He's like, oh, maybe these little brats learned the thing or two for me. <laughs> but anyway. Before we move on to karaoke time and what I think is one of the best scenes of this uh, season so far, and one of my favorite scenes of the show, if I'm being honest, with the karaoke moment, let me see what you guys are talking about, and we'll get back into the breakdown here. But again, um, we got, what, 74 people coming in. Come in, come in, welcome. Come sit down, get a drink. Let's talk some succession. I appreciate you all joining me tonight. Just a friendly reminder, if you're having a good time, hit the thumbs up, please. It goes a long way. Appreciate the love. Continue to leave your great comments in the chat here as we're going to bring them up on the screen. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Talk Succession. We got Barry coming up in a couple weeks. We got a new show called Beef coming out on Netflix in a couple days that we'll be talking about and so much more to look forward to this month. So consider subscribing, man. We have a good time over here. And I would love for you all to join me on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. So consider subscribing, y'all. But let's see. Let's see what everyone's talking about in the chat. Um, where did I leave off at? <clears throat> I think I got that one earlier. Let me scroll down. Ken is where he needs to be. I think, I, yeah, we, we talked about that earlier. Let me catch up. I'm a little bit behind. I apologize. Apologize. Greg is handling his business. <laughs> What's up, Nisi? Uh, Greg handled the bad news well. The focus group was genius. The arms, Nisi. The <laughs> rubber BR. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, Connor said the real is his superpower. Oh, well, listen, man, that was a that was a line. That was a line, man. I love it. Oh, the rubbery arms, Nate. My gosh, bro, that was so goddamn funny. Can't Logan just go to the wedding? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, all right, awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, all right, so let's get back to it, man. <clears throat> So we see the kids trying to hang out. And of course, leave it to Connor. He texts Logan. He texts Logan where they're at. And the kids, and, it, and again, it's almost like Darth Vader, or like the devil. As soon as they say Logan's coming, their whole temperament is just like brought down because they're nervous, they're scared, it's their dad. And I didn't think Logan was going to show up to this kind of hole in the wall club. But uh, he's here. He's here and he's there's that smile, y'all. There's that smile on his face as he's uh paying a visit to his kids and it's getting a hole in a wall club. And let me tell y'all something, man. I love this scene so goddamn much. I love how Logan is just playing these kids, man. He tells them, you know, he's not there to talk shop. He's there to say uh, a couple things, an apology, one of them. But before that was, you know, kids, I was upset that you all didn't attend my birthday. Pay attention to the mental gymnastics that he's playing with them, man. Pay attention to what he's doing in this scene. He leads with emotion. <laughs> because what have we seen so far? with these kids and particularly Roman, not so much, but definitely Ken and Siobhan. They are led right now with their emotions. Ken is thriving off of the fact that he's beating his father in the Pierce deal and, you know, messing up this deal with uh, Lucas. Shiv is trying to get the best of Tom with the divorce situation, pissed that he's, you know, messing with the lawyers, pissed that he's not as, 
maybe ab as upset about this being at hand, the divorce, that she wants him to be because she's not leading the charge. And also she wants to screw over her father because her father's helping Tom with the divorce. So those two are leading with emotions. So what does Daddy Logan know? He knows his kids. He knows, as, 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 a, as bad as a father that he is, he's a smart businessman. And he knows his enemies. And his, his enemies happen to be his kids at the moment, but he knows them better than anyone. He knows them better than they do. He knows that they're emotional right now. So what does he say? He doesn't talk shop. He says, kids, I'm, I'm upset. You know, I wanted you guys there. And, he, and, and look, there's, there's a little bit of truth in that because we saw last week that he was clearly bothered by his kids not being there. You know, the whole roast me, roast me. He wanted, you know, he wanted Rome to say something slick. He wanted Ken to say something silly or shiv. They weren't there. He, he did miss them, but... He's smart. He's smart. He's like, why weren't you guys there? What a move. What a move. Putting the putting the personal stuff before the business. I see you, Logan. Again, who was the MVP tonight? But he then goes a step further. All right, I'm gonna play the victim for a hot second. Just a hot second. But then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and be the bigger man. I'm gonna do something that I don't normally do. He starts to apologize to them about. The situation and what happened with obviously last year with the divorce with their mom involved and getting you know getting her on her side all this stuff love shiv she wasn't budging she wasn't moving love ken as he mentions that it's a hundred million dollars more on the table but i want y'all to notice who was the one kid in the room that wasn't taking the bait in regards to the emotional bait right now like i said i love these two Two great characters, fantastic acting from Sarah every single week, from Jeremy every single week. These two right now, they're thriving off of the drama. They're thriving off of the personal stuff, right? The family drama. They're living in the tea. They're sipping the tea like I'm sipping my water. They're having a good time. Rome is the only one in this room right now that is kind of, being smart, he's kind of seeing the situation. He's seeing his siblings thriving in this, but Rome is the only one that's like, and also Connor's like, hear him out, guys. And again, Connor is just, he, he just is always up and down, left and right, wherever wherever he sees money, he's going to go that way. But Rome is the one that's like, you know, Dad, you're saying you're sorry. What, what exactly are you sorry about? And he goes on, you know, and, and Rome's, like I said, the only one that's not taking that, that, um, upsetness or being in their feelings or being, you know, mad of the situation at hand. He says, dad, you know, what, what is it exactly that you're, you're upset about? And again, who is the more aggressive person in the situation? It's Siobhan, it's Kendall. Meanwhile, Logan, cool, calm, collective, tells as they're landing in on him, call him this, that, and the other. He's just like, listen, I'm sorry for what happened. But after you poke a bear enough times, after you call a bear every other name, you know, the bear pokes back. The bear bites back. You know, this is Jaws. This is Santa Claus, a.k.a. a hitman. He tells his kids, listen, kids. And also, too, before we get into this, I still want you all to pay attention to Carrie in the room. She doesn't leave. She's kind of leaving the conversation because we know this is pillow talk. This is the conversation she has with Logan in the bed. You know what I'm saying? She knows all this stuff. You know, so I do want to, again, show you, don't want to leave out that Carrie is, she's, she's someone we should keep an eye out for. But then after you poke a bear enough times, the bear bites back. He tells them, love this line, kids, I love you, but you're not serious people. And walks out. Again, the master of manipulation. Mic drop moment. This scene was so fantastic. Just the fact, location, they're at a random ass club in the back of a karaoke bar or whatever. Logan steps in there, shifts the whole tune, shifts the whole mood of the situation, plays them like a fiddle, and goes back to the emotion. What do Shiv, Kendall, Rome, Connor, all of them, what do they want to do? They want to prove their father wrong. And when your father tells you, I love you, but you're not serious. You're not on my level. You'll never be on my level. You never have been on my level. All these little checker moves you think you're making, not even close to what I'm doing. 
I love this scene. I love the show. I love the writing. I love the acting. I'm going to miss the hell out of this show because it's ending, obviously. But this scene to me is just the the, 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 the fundamental nature of the show is we're just, you know, you take away the glitz, the glamour, the quick-witted jokes, the millions of billions of dollars, the, polit- the political aspect of the show. You strip all that down. At the end of the day, this is a show about kids wanting to improve, wanting to impress their dad. That's the human story. That's the that's what keeps me watching the show because I, I don't love watching shows of rich people doing dumb shit. I don't like that. It's not that's not dynamic. It's not interesting. It's the human story that keeps me invested in the show. And this was such a great moment because uh, you know I didn't grow up with my dad, but you know my mom, my grandmother, when they would tell me something like, "I'm not mad at you." I'm just disappointed in you, right? That's that cuts deeper than them being mad at you. And the same thing could be said about this scene. I love you guys, but you're not serious people. Oh my gosh, that that cut. You saw how that cut. That left them <laughs> heartbroken. When he said that. I, I can go on and on and on about this scene, but I don't want to bore you guys to death. I, I I don't know. I just love it so much. I love it so much. But before we wrap up the episode here, let me get to the comment section and see what you guys are talking about. Let me know what you all thought about that fire scene. I, I love every second of it, but uh, let me see what you guys are talking about in the chat and we'll, and we'll wrap it up here and get to get to you guys' final thoughts before we uh, call it a night. And again, we're, we're about an hour, 11 minutes in. Thank you again. Okay. I will always thank you guys for supporting the channel, uh, being here with me. Um, it means a lot. So I appreciate y'all. Uh, but let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Yeah, that was great. Again, that scene, man. Ah, oh, the, the 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 sparring and the back and forth was just so great, man. Uh yeah, but Shiv is also <laughs> so true, Maddie. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Ken wants to be number one. Shiv wants to be number one. Yeah. Maybe Ken doesn't tell Shiv wrong because he doesn't want. Okay, it's interesting. Can I grab you for five minutes? <laughs> Can I grab you? And Carrie's like, uh, yeah, you grab anyone, every other woman in Manhattan. Uh, it's the deal. <clears throat> Good point, G. Um, Greg handling business. Yeah, Greg handled the bad news well. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I th- okay, I think I already caught. Okay, this is where, okay, let me see. There we go, here we go. Um, there we go. Juice. Mind games, yep. <clears throat> First, he wanted to change location to switch up the power dynamic to yeah, good, good call, G. But hey, slogan, he can he can drop a bomb in the middle of a bathroom if he needed to, right? Do you think we'll? <clears throat> do you think we? Do you think he would have given that apology if Carrie wasn't in the air? That's what I'm saying, uh, Nate. Going back to what I was saying, noticing Carrie in that move, she's speaking to a lot of the emotional side of Ken, to to Logan, which indicates that this is their pillow talk. This is what they talk about at night. So, no, I think that it was key for her to be in that room because if she was in that room, I think that line of I don't take you guys seriously would have been the first thing that came out of his mouth in that room. But with her there, I think this was Carrie's kind of maybe suggestion to come in cold, come in a little reserved, come in like a caring father and see how it goes. He played it for a bit, but after Ken throws out some money motions uh, or notions about the money and the deal on the table and Shiv says what she says, you're human gas like this, then the other, he's like, oh, God damn it. Let me take off this fake daddy cares about you guys for a second and just tell you the truth. So I think, yeah, if she wasn't there, I think he would have just dropped the hammer on him pretty quickly. Uh, Mass manipulator, 100%. Uh, I think the kids know that their dad is only saying uh, he feels sorry. <clears throat> They've been burned too much. He's going. Oh, oh, yeah. Well said. Well said. Um, it's working. He's playing Roman because he 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 got to him. He got to him. Um, kids on one percent with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. That it doesn't get old, G. And I mean, hey, <clears throat> you know, um. Parents, man, you love them, but they, they're the ones that, I mean, any, and they always say, you know, family cuts the, the deepest, right? So, yeah, man, gets them every time, gets them every time. <clears throat> What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. I don't watch the session, unfortunately. Just can't, I, hey, 
man, you're the best. I appreciate you. But you listen, man, do me a favor. If you get a chance, watch Succession. Do yourself a favor. Catch up on the episodes. But no, shout out to Mayan. Shout out to all 75 of you all uh, joining me. Uh, but shout out to, to Mayan. Just showing some love. Don't even watch the show, but showing some love. I appreciate you. All right, y'all. So let's let's wrap up this fantastic episode. As we see Logan walking out from this uh, nuclear bomb he just dropped on his kids. As um, Oh, wait. Let me. <laughs> apologies. Apologies. Let me go back for a second here because we, we've been kind of. We, we mentioned it previously. But I do want to bring up a moment of, again, he's a moron. He's a creep. He's a perv, if you ask me. Connor, you know, even with that said, I'm, I'm still a human at heart. And I, I got to admit, and maybe it's the acting. It, it, it is the acting for that makes me have a little bit of sympathy for Connor. When he tells his siblings, um, you know, I don't need love. I was born without it, you know, a little little Bane moment. Oh, oh, you think darkness is your ally? You just merely adopted the darkness. I was born in it, molded by it. You don't get me started. Uh, shout out to Dark Knight Rises. But um, you know, he tells them I was born without love. You know, you kids uh, have always done things without me. Dad never cares about me. Uh, we got to remember, you know, just putting his uh, his 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 him being a moron aside for a second. In reality, in his weird world, this is the night of his rehearsal. This is the day before his wedding. This is supposed to be the best day of his life. But instead, brothers and sisters are running late for his rehearsal, hours late, you know, because dad held up their chopper, because dad isn't talking to them, because dad is uh, trying to sell the company, but the siblings are trying to disrupt the company. Just putting ourselves in Connor's shoes for a hot second, I would be pretty pissed right now. Because, again, he's always forgotten about, which makes me think that I don't know what the show's going to do with Connor. I think that there's some something crazy going to do with him. I know his wedding's going to be next week. I don't know if something big's going to happen. I don't know if he's going to be the president of the show. If he's going to end up being the successor of this whole show. I don't know. They, I think something's big is going to happen with Connor. Um, someone mentioned earlier in the chat that, you know, maybe someone, Lowen's going to kill one of the kids at the wedding. And I don't think you're too far off with that. I don't know. I'm trying to think back to the trailer. I don't want to get too dark here, but I wouldn't be surprised if Connor, and I, I gotta be careful with this word on YouTube, but I don't know if he might, he might unalive himself come next week. Could we could, could we see that happening? Because it's it's again, he he's he's million, he's a billionaire, but you know, you still have emotions. His family's not there. What if Willa doesn't want to marry him? And he just does something pretty he, 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 he unalyze himself. Can we see that happening? Let me know in the chat. But anyway, I did feel bad for him when he, when he said that. I, I, when he said he doesn't feel love, he hasn't been loved, and he's just used to it. He doesn't know if Will is coming back or not, but if he doesn't, you know, it's just just, just another, another regular day for Connor being disappointed by someone that he thinks he loves in his weird way. But let me know how you felt about that. I, I feel bad for him. I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, he's 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 depressed, man. He's sad. He doesn't have anyone, and I'm sure he's jealous, or not even jealous, but might feel a way that his siblings are always there together. But he's always the the, the redheaded stepchild or the, the forgotten child. So we'll see. But as we wrap up, we wrap up with again, Ken's kind of feeling good about himself. You know, he's in the car. He just had a sparring match with his dad and thinks that he's having a good time. We see um, opposite of that, <clears throat> we see Siobhan, who, again, her whole thing this episode was just kind of being, and, and even last week, just being so thrown off the fact that Tom has really kind of taken charge and really hasn't reacted the same way or reacted in the way that she was thinking that he would in regards to this divorce. And we see that again, I'll pull up the screenshot here. She's still bothered, clearly. And and, and if we're being honest, you know, we're, we're taking tallies at home. Tom's winning the emotional battle with her right now. And going back to Connor, man, he's um, he heads home. And surprisingly, Willa's there. And, and again, if you all have seen the trailer, it, it alludes to at least that the wedding <clears throat> seems to be on board. I don't know if she's going to say I do and, and all that stuff. Hell, maybe he walks away. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 
because I think in the trailer, he, 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 he says to her, do you, do you want me for your money? He's like, no, 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 duh, <laughs> Sherlock. They take this long to figure this out. But anyway, we see them in bed together, um, hugging, and we'll see what comes of that. But <sighs> surprise, surprise, surprise. As we wrap up the episode, guess who dad convinced to join, or at least for the, for the time being, he got through to one of the kids. And it happens to be the most vulnerable of them all. That's Roman. And what I mean by vulnerable, he's the one that seems to really, how do I put this? The approval of their father. Obviously, Shiv wants the approval. Ken, Con, they all want their approval. We talked about the, the emotional resonance with this show. <clears throat> but he seems to be the one that thrives off of having his father's approval because he is somewhat of a screw up, right? He was kind of late behind the ball. Ken was always kind of in business. Shiv was doing the politics. Connor's doing whatever, but he was always kind of late to the party in regards to being a, the the adult in the room. That's because he hasn't let go of dad's hand. He still wants to be led by his father and not want to be that leader. We saw that. I want to backtrack on my comment there. We saw him trying to be a leader in episode one of this season with trying to start the company. And we've seen him do other leadership things in previous seasons, but in particularly focusing on this season, we saw him want to start the business with his brothers and sisters with 100 that was debunked. We saw him. Let's focus on the Pierce acquisition. That was debunked because the kids are now, again, Shiv and Ken are just so driven by emotions. Let's do this deal. Let's, let's disrupt this deal. They pushed him out. I don't want to make excuses for Rome. He's a grown-ass man. But they, they pushed him back to his father by not listening to him, by not taking in his suggestions of starting something on their own. He tried to do it. But he was met with pushback, and they push him so far back, he ends up in his father's lap. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Again, Logan, he's testing people throughout this episode. He's testing Tom, handling the Carrie situation. He's testing Shiv and Ken with this whole deal at hand, what's at hand. A lot of money's on the table. And he's testing Roman. And by testing Roman, he tells him, again, it's the way he uses his words. It's the way he knows his kids better than they know themselves. He tells Roman what he needs to hear. He tells him, <clears throat> I'm meeting with Lucas tomorrow morning. I want you to attend. Dad, I don't think I need I don't think I need to be here. You don't really need me. He tells him, I need a fire breather. And I want you to help me running and getting he has a speech early in this episode about being the pirates and, you know, on, on the and, and leading the, the group together. He tells them, I want you to run ATM. And he tells him, Roman, I need you. We know these kids are emotionally unstable. And words like I need you is just what is just enough currency that they need to hear. And I think he's he's got them. He's got him. Split up the kids. I got you, Roman. <sighs> he tells Roman, I need you to join me, son. I need you. I need. That's just the words Roman's been wanting to hear probably since he was a little kid. Being thrown in a cage as a, as a, as a dog, you know, as, as Ken did to him. You know, doing all the stuff, being called the screw up, being called the, the less intelligent sibling of the, of the four. I need you, Rome. And, and, and again, I, I brought it up a couple times in this episode. How many times have we seen Logan smile in this episode? I don't know. I've lost count. I don't know. Have we seen Logan smile so much in an episode? <sighs> what an episode. So the question at hand for I have for you all watching this. Does Roman take the bite, the bait? Does he join his dad? Next week's the trailer kind of alludes to he does. Let me know in the chat, does Roman join forces back with his father? What do you think about Carrie and her situation at hand? What do you think about Greg? Will he go on a high trip now that he has a little bit of power and he actually put someone down or shot someone down for the first time? Tom, what do we think about Tom this episode and, and the moves he makes uh, with the, the whole divorce at hand and the way he was able to maneuver around the given the news about Carrie not being ready to be an anchor? Shiv, Ken, where are they at mentally? Talk to me in the comments. Sandy, Junior, Stewie, The Deal, Lucas, is it in jeopardy? 
Let me know in the comments, y'all. We're going to continue to have this conversation in live chat. So for those watching this breakdown, come and join us every Sunday, uh, roughly 15 maybe sometimes 20 minutes after the episode premieres, join the live stream, join the live discussion with our after show before you all leave the breakdown. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. We love succession. I love you all. Come and join the community. We'll catch you all in the next breakdown. But meanwhile, for my live audience, we're going to continue this conversation. I'm going to get to your comments here, but uh, let me know what you all thought about the finale and all the questions I just posed in the end there. So let me see. Let me get back to the comments here and see what we are talking about. Um, Michelle Carter saying, hey, Elliot, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. I was running late, Michelle, so you're fine. You're good. Uh, same time next week, will we have a watch live or delayed? Um, yeah, no, same time next week, man. Uh, I, um, I don't know how long next week's episode is, but it won't, I won't be as late as I was tonight. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week, man. Um, and, and I know you brought up the watch part. Well, Poppy... We'll probably do a watch party for the finale, potentially, because Barry in this show is going to be going on at the same time. But we'll 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 figure it out. Connor was really creepy. I saw Logan and him for the first time. Oh, interesting, interesting. Um, let's see, Nate. I saw someone say Connor might be the most evil of the kids. Hmm, it's a good point. It's a good point. I might have to agree with that. He seems very depressed. Yeah. <clears throat> no way Logan catch a body. <laughs> uh, Connor gets dumped trash by the news and the election, drinks too much. I can see it now. Mm, yeah, good point, Maddie. <clears throat> well, it's all, yeah, it's all, oh, it's a good, it's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah, he's the, she's the only one that he can kind of control, right? Yeah. Or he could reveal something publicly that. <sighs> Ooh, Maddie, that's a good one there, man. Ooh, I like that. Uh, what Connor claims to be his superpowers is avoid the speech to cry for help. Yeah, for sure. Good point, man. So, <laughs> uh, yep, the speech of the kids protecting out of everything is gonna. Run. Yeah, man. Yeah, good stuff, Maddie. Okay, good point, Michelle. Connor seems to be more detached to me than the press. I think he is dangerous. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you, you guys are onto something about him maybe um, disrupting everything and, and throwing a bomb and messing up family business. Yeah, you guys are on some good stuff there. I appreciate it. Uh, as a hardcore Roman stan, I need my man to grow up. Backbone every time Logan dangles a carrot in front of him. Yeah, <laughs> good point. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. Uh, they put, yeah, man. I mean, you, 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 you they, they, they forced his hand, man. Strong prenup between. There has to, oh, yeah, I feel for sure, for sure. Uh, trailer next is Roman in the middle of a mental breakdown. Yeah, this was a good trailer. It's a good, good trailer that, that, that they played. Divide and Conquer. Uh, my stomach hurt. Roman, don't fall for the same old trick Logan sent you to a management re, uh, training. Yeah. Uh, Maddie has to make a decision. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Maddie, Maddie says Roman has to make a decision. Um, he has to hurt someone else's interest for his own. Roman being hit all the time as a kid has made him opposite of an adult. He's afraid to hurt other people. Interesting perspective. I like that. I like that. Uh, that's how I'm finally learning how to get someone. <laughs> well, he's always leaned on, on Greg to be his, uh, his hit man, uh, in certain situations, though. Health issues pretty rare. For, yeah. <clears throat> uh, call him first. It was Roman. Yeah. Uh, good call, JB. From death to bed to now. Yeah. I would love to see Connor air family dirt. He doesn't keep secrets. What if he had Jerry? Uh, Jerry McGuire breakdown. Hey, we're going to find out next week because next week seems to be the wedding, y'all. So uh, if you guys have any other comments, man, we're coming up on an hour and a half, which was uh, was kind of around the same uh, length that we had for last week's episode. So um, any final comments, concerns, theories, predictions, pros, cons, and everything in between, I think we've all kind of come to a agreement that um, Logan – was the MVP in tonight's episode? Let me know what your my favorite scene of tonight, as you all could tell in my breakdown, was the um, the, the karaoke room. That that scene was beautiful. But let me know in the comments why, why I still have you here. What was your favorite scene? And then 
drop your scores in the comments as well. So I just threw a lot at you. Let me go back. What would you rate tonight's episode out of 10? Who was your MVP? And what was your favorite scene in tonight's episode? And again, any final predictions and theories you all have before we call it a night? Let me know. Let me know um, before we wrap up tonight. But as you guys are getting your comments in, um, really uh, just overall thoughts. Fantastic episode. Well written. Great performances as always. And, you know, last week the kids won. This week the dad wins. So. I just love the back and forth, and I'm really looking forward to seeing to what the wedding has next week. And speaking of next week, before we even get there, this week, keep an eye out for a lot of content. I'm going to be seeing Mario tomorrow, so uh, probably have an honor theater reaction for that. And if it's really good, might do a full review on it. Uh, I don't do a lot of animated reviews, but you know, if, if it is that good, then you know, expect some type of longer form video on Mario. Uh, Tuesday, I'll be seeing Air finally, the new Ben Affleck film. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Probably out of theater reaction. If I can find the time, do a full review. Um, what else have we got this week? Beef, 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 beef on Netflix. Ali Wong, uh, Steven Yen. Fantastic show. Can't wait to talk to you all about that. Keep mark your calendars. This comes out Thursday, April 6th. You, you won't be disappointed. You're gonna love it. Can't wait to talk to you all about that. And then is there anything else that I'm forgetting? I think that's it. And then, of course, we'll be back next Sunday for uh, episode three of this show. But I think I'm missing something. I think Beef was the big thing I'm really excited to talk to you all about. And then, of course, the two movies. But I think there was another movie that was coming out this week. I don't know. I can't remember. More, more, Even more reason to hit that notification bell to see, see what we got going on. Uh, but all right, let me see what you guys' comments are from the questions I posed. All right, so... Maddie said, I like the way they set up this season. I have no idea what would happen. Just a bunch of theories. Great writing and acting. Yep. And how this <clears throat> and how disgusting has Greg been. <laughs> we got an eight out of ten. What's up, Ashley? Uh Tom seems nervous, but I love the cracking on uh oh, Goodness, that addition tape was so bad. Uh, the karaoke reunion was sweet. Yeah, I love that scene. MVP, Logan. Yeah, Logan was there for sure. <clears throat> karaoke bar, yep. Uh, 8 out of 10. Mine was uh, Santa. Uh, <laughs> nice. Tonight was a 9. My favorite scene was the karaoke scene as well. I love Logan in the manipulation mode. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Eight out of ten, Greg is always the best. Greg, man, he 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 laid it down on Carrie tonight, right? Uh, beef looks so good. Yeah, Nate, I can't wait to talk about that later this week, man. Um, I'm, I got some things in the works. I'm gonna probably <clears throat> do a, 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 a I have a conversation set up with a with a friend of the channel, a special guest for later this week. Doing a, probably like a full series breakdown, and then depending on the on the um, reception of the show, which I'm pretty confident people are going to love it, but I might do another live stream that we did for Swarm the following Monday. So maybe next week, depending on if everyone gets a chance to watch it, we might do a live stream having like a live discussion about beef. So yeah, really looking forward to talking about that show with you all. <coughs> Eight and a half out of 10. Logan Roy was your MVP. Nice. Uh, did you already watch? Yeah, I did. I finished it uh, last week and uh, I'm going to be rewatching it again, starting tonight into tomorrow before I do a series breakdown. So yeah, uh, definitely got a chance to check it out and really excited to talk about it. Great group talk. Thanks for keeping me in company on the East Coast. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you. And I love that picture of your dog there. Little cutie pie. All right, y'all. We're going to call it a night. I really, really thank you all, man. I love these discussions. I love this show, as you all know. But more importantly, what makes me love the show even more is having people to talk to it about, which is you all. So thank you to all the people that joined in tonight's live. Um, before you all leave, just a friendly reminder to hit that thumbs up. If you had a good time, again, I want to give a quick shout out to Zia with the super chat earlier, my man Brandon with the super chat earlier, and also a quick shout out to all of you all, again, that joined me tonight on the discussion. I hope you had a good time. As I did last week, I'm going to chop this discussion up and, and formulate it to a, a review uh, and a breakdown and have it for those that couldn't join us tonight, have that uh, put out uh, tomorrow morning. And then, like I said earlier, Mario, air, uh, beef. So those are things you can look forward to this week. 
And uh, yeah, man, we're on the road to 50K, y'all. So if you can, if you know someone that knows someone that knows someone that might enjoy my content, send them this way and uh, suggest that they hit that subscribe button and just give it a test run, right? It's free. It doesn't hurt anyone. Let them know to subscribe for we can uh, hit the 50K and I can just retire like uh, Logan. I can just retire and call it a day. <laughs> No, nah, man, I love y'all, man. You guys are awesome. Hope you had a, a great weekend. Hope you have a fantastic week coming up and starting off with a great Monday. And I uh, look forward to all the great content coming later this week. And I can't wait to see you guys next week to talk about this uh, third episode that we have coming up. So awesome, awesome. You guys take care again. Be safe out there. And uh, we will catch you guys on the next breakdown. Peace.